Hey guys, welcome back. 2017, a happy new year. In this video I will go through a bunch of different 18650 cells bought from eBay from mostly China. As you all are aware of, there are a lot of fake products out there, and especially when it comes to batteries. As you all are aware of, everyone has sometimes been tricked when it comes to eBay and AliExpress and Wish and every, whatever they are called. I took the opportunity to actually go ahead and buy every damn 18650 cell that I could find on eBay that were cheap. And I'm not talking about LG or Sony or Samsung brands or anything like that. I'm talking, talking about all the no-name brands. I got hold of roughly 25 of them. I think I have 19 have arrived one month later. So I'm still waiting for some of them and let's see if they will show up. In this video I will talk a little bit about what I'm going to do to the batteries, how I'm going to test them and what you should look for. First of all, you can see that I have a couple of batteries here. And one noticeable thing is that if you take them up like this and hold them and just tap them to each other, you can really feel that they are empty. Another thing when it comes to batteries like this is that real batteries like the ones I have here from LG, they weigh roughly 44 to 45 grams each. The cheap ones most of the time only weigh around 24 grams when you get them. They say that they weigh 44 in the advert as well, but they don't. So, if they are below 40 grams, most likely junk. Secondly, when it comes to the capacity on the cells. Let's take an example here. As you can see here, 9900 milliamps hours. That's impossible. I'm sorry to say that, but I think Tesla and those guys have roughly 3400, 3600 milliamp hours. And most of the batteries here are labeled above that. Though I do have one here that is 2500 milliamp hours instead. That one may be close to it, but at the same time, the way is still around 24 grams. And this is very interesting as well, because every one of the batteries I have received so far weigh 24 grams or around there. That looks like may they be the same original manufacturer. Another thing you can notice if you take a closer look at the batteries, let's see if we can focus. You will see that the top cap of them look roughly the same. Not much of a difference between them. Let's take a look at the charging setup I'm using. First of all, the charger I'm using is an iCharger 308 Duo. That means it has two different channels and I will be able to actually charge and discharge or test two cells at the same time. The cables I'm using here are pretty thick to make sure I don't have too much of a voltage gap between the cell and the charger. When it comes to the different channels, I have measured them up before and made sure they are in specs uh, so they doesn't differ too much because that would cause big issues as well. The voltage ranges on the charger that I'm using is between 4.2 volts as the top and 3.0 volts as the bottom end. And I think most users or most of you out there sh would consider that to be a fairly good testing range. I'm testing this with 0.5 amps. Uh, some say that you should test it higher or you should test it lower, but I want to have consistent numbers between all cells and at the same time I'm not out after gaining the most of the batteries, I'm just out after to show you guys that they aren't in specs. All the batteries I have bought here should or do say that 0.5 amps is something that I should be able to handle. I have some batteries even coping with 24, 
or 25 amps, but I don't I doubt that. 0.5 amps is a charging current. I discharge at 0.5 as well. Uh, I end the discharge when I have reached 3.0 volt and 20% of the 0.5 amps. That charger is connected to my computer here. And on this computer I have running a program called LogView that do analyze and collect the data from the charger itself. For instance, here you have one of the graphs of the charging process of one of the batteries. On this channel here, the channel 2, you have the same. This battery was full, so just tickling in the end and I think it ends at 10% uh, of the max charging current. So when it does start to discharge, it will go down again. I'm waiting 3 minutes between the charge and the discharge and that should give me plenty enough time to actually get the battery to settle somewhat. If you're doing a very very good measurement, you should wait 12 or 24 hours or something like that. But I don't have the time and I don't think it's necessary for this kind of test. I will be saving all this data on a blog post later when it's done. I'm running two discharge tests just to make sure that I don't fail on the first or second one to make. I'm logging everything from voltage, current, capacity, everything you should have to log. I'm not logging the temperature on the cells itself, uh, but I will be checking that manually. Since I'm not going full out and drawing like 20 fam 25 amps out of the batteries, that should not be a problem. The data I collect will be saved in a Google spreadsheet. Uh, in this spreadsheet I will collect the basic information like what seller it was, what price I paid for it, the claimed uh, milliamps, uh, the claimed weight and the actual weight of them. I will also be measuring like initial voltage when I get the cell, the cells because some of them may be very low, like I had one that was 0.269 volt. That's way too low, the charger won't even start charging it. All of that information will be in this document. I will also be collecting information like delivery time. Uh, you have to note that I live in Sweden. I will also be collecting some information like uh, if I get my money back from the seller, because for all the ones that here that aren't what they are claimed for, or even close to it, I will be claiming my money back. I will also be adding information like first discharge, second discharge on the milliamps, and I think this information should be more than enough. Uh, attaching that with the graphs, of course, you guys will see how they look like. When all this is done, I will do one final thing, and that is to cut the cells in half. Since all those cells were very, very light, I'm going to take a look inside them and see how they look. I will also take a look and see if we can find the soda claimed cutoff protection board that should be inside them. For instance, this battery is this battery is pretty awesome or at least on the paper. It says high drain rechargeable battery, 35 amps. Hmm, I doubt I will be even get close to 35 amps even though if I put a cable across both ends. Let's see about that. For instance, this battery here says discharge rate, no memory effect, low reoccurring operation assist, short circuit and overcurrent protection, shelf leaf around 10 years, environmental friendly. So that's pretty interesting because it do state that they do have overcurrent and everything like that. Some of the batteries even state a certain voltage where they cut off. I think that's basically it and how I'm going to test this all. I think it will take roughly 12 to 24 hours per battery to test them. There is a lot of work behind this. So it will most likely take 2 or 3 weeks before the next video will come up. Uh, hopefully not that long. If you have any suggestions on what you want to have included in this or what information you do want in the document for this please let me know down below. Other than that it's time to get cracking with the tests and I hope I get the rest of the cells so please subscribe and like and follow me on the next video. Thank you and bye.